How significant is this finding? Well, it's very significant, Andrew, because these planets are close to us, uh, which means that they're going to be easy to study in the future. As the scientists were saying, the next generation telescope, James Webb, which is much bigger than Hubble, will actually be able to see these individual stars or individual planets. We haven't seen them yet. And uh, so it's great. They're, they're in our backyard. They, they could be like us. What's also interesting is that they're going around a different type of star than our sun. Our search for planets up to this point is always been looking for sun-like stars, and the kind of planets that we've been finding have been like Jupiter, big giant gas balls that are not the kind of thing that we can live on. So here we have a small star called a dwarf star, and it's much cooler. It, it's sort of think like, uh, you know when you light a campfire, when it first lights up, you're far away from it, but then as it goes down, you have to keep snuggling up closer and closer to it to stay warm. So these planets are around this little star, but they're really, really close to it. They only take a matter of days to go around it, but they can still be warm warm enough. So that means that we can have Earth-like planets with very, very different sun in the sky, very different other planets around them. So it's, it's kind of neat that there's a variety, a variation on what we think of as, as our home. Um, so when they say, though, finding an Earth-like planet or finding a second Earth, people start to think, well, doesn't that possibly mean life? The big word there is possibly means life. They haven't found life yet. Finding life is really, really hard because uh, they're too far away that we can't see their surfaces, so we can't see if there are any uh, little green men waving back at us or any cities on the surface. We, we can't get that close. And if there's life there, you've got to look for the byproducts of life. You've got to look for things like uh, carbon dioxide or oxygen. Uh, plants give off oxygen. So that's, that's one sen uh, sense here on Earth. We have a lot of oxygen in our atmosphere because of plants. Uh, we also, when we decompose, we give off methane gas, and uh, so maybe that's a sign of life. But every time that has happened, other people come along and say, well, maybe it's not life, maybe it's geology, maybe it's chemistry. So it's really hard to tell whether or not there's life there, but at least if you have the right temperature, if you have water, and you have an atmosphere, liquid water, on Earth, wherever we see water, we see life. But just seeing that on another planet doesn't prove it. It's going to take a lot of work to prove that. But it but is exciting. We heard from uh, Sarah Seeger, the Canadian professor from uh, MIT. She was speaking there. And she kind of, as you always talk in terms of the Goldilocks, right? So not too hot, not too cold, just right. And she said, in this case, Goldilocks has many sisters. So, I mean, that's, it, it, that's essentially why uh, these scientists are so excited, right? That there are at least there are three that appear to be in that perfect, just right zone. That's right, which means that if, if they had life on them, the environments would be very different on those planets. One would be warm, one would be medium, and one would be colder, like Mars, or a bit colder than Mars. So the, the kind of life that would adapt there would be adapted to those specific conditions. So we'd see different varieties of life on those planets. And if one of them, uh, the one that's in really close, if it always keeps its same face towards the star, like our moon does to the Earth, the weather there would be really weird. Uh, the sun would not move in the sky. It would always be in the same spot. So one side of it would be hot, the other side would be cold. I don't know what kind of weather you get from that. Yeah. And the dark side would never see the sun, so it would always be night. So I don't know what kind of life would adapt to that type of environment. But, you know, here on Earth, we have life that, that lives in extreme environments, lives in ice, lives underground, lives underwater, in acids, all kinds of things. So who knows what we mm. could find on these worlds? Lives in Canada, the humans that live in Canada in the winter. Uh, not where <laughs> you live, though. Uh, let me ask you, though, you know, there was, one, there was one picture, I think it was Sarah Seeger that showed, of people kind of looking out and being able to see the, the other planets nearby, and they were big, unlike... unlike we can't. We can sort of see with a telescope, but we can't see well. Did that strike That's you? That means they're close together. Oh yes. Uh, this system. Uh, think about it as uh, Jupiter. When Galileo looked at Jupiter with his telescope back in 1610, he saw four little dots going around it. They're called the Galilean satellites, and they're quite close to Jupiter. And Jupiter is about the size of this star. And the moons of Jupiter are a bit smaller than than our Earth, but they're it's similar. And if you are on these moons of Jupiter, not only is Jupiter big in your sky, but you can see the other worlds as worlds. Here on Earth, when we look at Mars or these evenings, I notice you, I don't know if you've seen in the west just after the sun goes down, there's a really bright star in the sky. That's Venus. But it's just a dot. So we only see dots. And in the morning, you see Jupiter. It's just a dot. Mm -hmm. There you would see 
possible world, much wow. like science fiction, yeah. Star Wars, uh, that kind of planet. So it'd be really spectacular to be there. So you, you cover this all the time, and I've spoken to you countless times. Does this make your top 10 list in terms of NASA discoveries, or where are you on that? Uh, I, I think it's up there in, in uh, top 10. If they find life, that'll really be. The, yeah. That's, the, that's number was, one. <laughs> places that, that could have life is great. Having them close to us, only 39 light years away, is terrific. The fact that we got a big telescope going up into space next year that could take a good look at them is great. I think it's a very exciting time right now.